Hey guys, DMS here. On today's two minute tip, we're going to be talking about the two different types of compression that affect your headphones and your listening experience overall. What are they? Let's find out. So let's get right in. There's two main types of compression. There's the actual compression of your source and there's the compression of dynamic range within your headphone or speakers, but we're talking about headphones today. Now, the compression that affects your source would be things like MP3s, FLAC, stuff like that. If you're listening on a lossless format versus a compressed format. Now, a lot of times this isn't gonna make the biggest difference in the world, but it does matter. It's You are going to notice a difference between an MP3 and a lossless format on a nicer setup. Now, if I'm using a headphone like the QC35 II or something like that, it's not gonna make a big difference between Spotify and Tidal, but for something like this DT880 or this Diana Phi, you're definitely going to want to be using a uncompressed format for your music. Now, this is just like compressing a photograph. As you compress the file farther and farther, information is going to be lost. Now, one of those things is generally dynamic range. 16-bit bit depth does not actually fill the entire range of dynamic range that our ears can hear, whereas 24 roughly approaches it and 32 surpasses it. And this plays into our next term, dynamic range compression which is when a headphone, for example, or an amp may be compressed. So this isn't talking about compressing and losing information specifically in terms of the file, but losing information in terms of the distance between the quietest and loudest point it can produce. So if a amp, for example, is compressed, the difference between the quietest and loudest point that it can possibly produce at any given time are gonna be closer together. Dynamic range compression is extremely popular in the loudness wars where songs are pushed farther and farther to their limits and things are just compressed in as tight as they can with little difference between loud and quiet points to try and make their songs louder, punchier, and stand out on the radio. Unfortunately, this has made its way into a lot of other technology, but now, as a fault of cheaper headphones, dynamic range compression can be an issue. Generally, if a headphone has very poor dynamic range or a lot of dynamic range compression, it's going to lose some details as everything's going to be squished together into a smaller space. Just as how soundstage and imaging work together, where a wide soundstage and good imaging has a very large range of points where you can pinpoint where any instrument is, it works the same way with dynamic range. If you have a headphone with very good dynamic range, you're going to be able to hear a lot of quiet and loud points in the song that you might not normally hear, like musicians in the studio in the background, people talking in the control room, little plucks of a guitar you may not hear before that are vibrating after a string has been played, the mallets hitting a piano's string, or a drummer adjusting his chair during a concert. All these little things may not seem like much, but they really contribute overall to a headphone's ability to sound more lifelike and natural, as well as present detail overall. So guys, I hope you liked that simplified explanation of the two main types of compression. If you did, please leave a like down below and a comment letting me know what you want to see in the future. If you want early access to videos like this one, you can check out the Patreon link in the video description. And as always, don't forget to stick around and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Until the next one, guys. Peace.